stop. If you're, if you're running through Facebook, you need to stop and check this out. We've got an exciting Bible study that's going to help you with what you're going through right now as we enter 2021. Happy New Year. Yeah. yeah. But we got to take care of a little housekeeping, Brian. Yes. The Rick, you surprised me. I, even I didn't know you were going to have to yeah, stop. Screaming, they were just thumbing through their Facebook. We stopped them. You did. Oh, boy. It is so good to be back in a new year. And for many of you uh, veterans out there, you kind of know the drill. But let me explain how this hour becomes a lot of fun for everyone. Um, we're going to be doing Bible study and prayer. And at the end of this program, we're going to take some time to pray. We would love for you guys to share um, comments at the bottom of the Facebook live feed, uh, prayer requests. Or if you prefer, you can text your prayer request to this number, 479 220 7107. That number's on the card here will be in front of us. So uh, please uh, be interactive. If you have a text that pertains to what we're talking about, put it at the bottom of the comments and it'll get sent up to the table and we'll share it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, another suggestion we'd love for you to do, share this feed tonight. Start a watch party. Uh, it's a great way to share Jesus with your friends. That's right. An easy way to share Jesus. It's, it's an easy way to let your light shine. There's a lot of people hurting out there right now. There's a lot of confusion out there right now, especially even everything going on today. Uh, this, this is going to be a very relevant message mm -hmm. to yes. those. But we need to pray first. We need, would you open us up in prayer? Yes. Okay. Dear my Father, thank you so much for being an awesome God who sees and knows everything and knows the beginning from the end. Thank you that Jesus is Lord and Christ and the Son of the living God, and thank you for being here with us you know every heart, every ache, every need. And we thank you for hearing us. We thank you that you take care of it in the name of Jesus. And thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to start in the book of Joshua. Joshua, if you want to go there, go ahead and go that way in your Bible. Joshua chapter 1. This is going to kind of set the stage for tonight's exciting Bible study. I want to get it kick started here. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Wow, Moses is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan and all this people to the land which I am given to them, the children of Israel. There they are. Big changes. Yes, big changes. <laughs> Could big you change. imagine being there? I mean, there's a lot of similarities between where they were that, that day right here in Joshua 1 and where we're at right now. Yeah. Big, a lot of similarities. It, mm -hmm. It's stunning. Um, you think about 40 years wandering in the wilderness, um, lost, uh, misbehaving, um, complaining, you name it, they were yeah. doing it. And I, I just look at our society today. Um, <laughs> The moral compass has been pulled up out of the bottom of the boat. We're confused. We're, we're angry at each other. Uh, there was a lot of bickering going on in, in the camp of Israel. Yes. Uh, you could write a long, long list of the similarities of, of what Israel was facing Yes. and what we're facing yes. today. They also had some sickness in the yep. camp mm -hmm. when, yep. when Moses yep. put the serpent on the pole. Yes. And they had to look at it. And um, new leadership. Yeah. 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 New, new leadership in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a lot of things. They had a lot of uncertainty. You can be sure that that day, Joshua one, that there was a lot of uncertainty in the camp. There was a lot of there was a lot of chaos. There was a lot of confusion. Almost there. Think about it. They were almost there, and Moses died. I mean, what can they do? How can we move forward? How can we move forward? You could have. I could just imagine as, as, uh, as God was speaking this to, to Joshua. Uh, he says, you know, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan. All, all you people, go over. I'm, I'm sure the people are thinking, we can't do this without Moses. You know? Right. Because yeah. you think about Moses, you know, we have no more than eight years of, of a U.S. president. Yes. Forty years plus. Of time in, in Egypt. What a loss. They, what a loss. They had come to know him for their uh, decisions, their safety, their spiritual direction, almost every part of their life. Moral Mo compass. Yeah. 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 Mo everything. Well, Moses was 
Yeah, he was the connection. That's Can right. we say that? He yeah. was the connecting link between God and the people. It, it, God spoke to the people through Moses. Moses. You know, if, if, if Moses, he's the one that freed them, that God used anyway, to free mm -hmm. them from their bondage that they were in. You know, he's he's the one that, that had his rod and, and stuck it in the in the Red Sea and, and the Red Sea parted. I mean these huge miracles that and they, and they brought water out of a rock and, and prayed to God and manna come down from heaven. I mean, he's the one that like you said, Wendy, earlier, when there was sickness, a lot of sickness in the camp. A lot of sickness in the camp. He is the one that God instructed to build a brass image and set it up of that serpent that was biting everyone. And that fiery serpent, serpent, and put it up in the middle of the camp, and everybody looked, and they it was a miracle healing. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. Moses really was there every time. He, he, he was their provider, their sustainer, and um, and so to lose him, even though Joshua was a known figure, he had been uh, an understudy, he'd been an intern, if you want to call him, mm -hmm. Moses. They still were very, very unsure of what was going to happen yeah. next, like we are. So they've lost a lot, just yeah. like we've lost a lot. Yeah. In 2020, oh my goodness. Yeah, and, and so uncertainty was there. Uh, but but in times like this, in times like this, what do you have to do? I mean, I mean, the th they let's just go ahead and say, we're really close to where they're at. In times like this, when it, when, when, when it looks like there's we're entering new ground, we've never been this way before, life would never be the same, mm -hmm. what do we have to do? And you're dealing with change. And yesterday was pretty bad. Yeah, today's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you do? The what do you only do? way that we can move forward is move forward by faith. We've got to have faith in God. We've got to have faith in God. Well, and the verse that came to mind as, as we think about this confusion, how in the world do you sort through this? And it's a fun verse for me. It's in Isaiah 30. Um, verse 21, you'll recognize it when I get into it. Mm -hmm. It says, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, yeah. this is the way, walk yes. in it. That's wherever right. you turn to the right hand, or, or whenever you turn to the right hand, or whenever you turn to the left. Um, what they needed, what we need, is guidance. From the Lord. From the Lord. Amen. And, Amen. And, I love that verse. And that's really what, if you look at in the first verses of Joshua that we're going to look at tonight, is yeah. God... Giving that reassurance to Joshua, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. his brand new leader, yes, facing this swollen river mm -hmm. in an unknown land, mm -hmm. and a crazy group of people behind him. And God has said, "It's your job to take them forward." And Lord, how do I do that? How do I do that? And and how in the world do I convince them that you're behind us? Doesn't he say something about putting where you put your foot? And, and was it verse three, Joshua one yeah. verse three? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and let me read. This is Joshua 1, verse 3. We're going to pretty much follow down through the first nine verses here. It says, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, that kind of sounds like Isaiah, mm -hmm. every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. And I looked that up in a Bible commentary that I had. It was interesting. They said that in those days, the, um, the custom was, that wherever you put your foot, mm -hmm. that then you took possession of that land. Yeah. And so here, the Bible is saying that every place that the sole of your foot treads, I will give you. Meaning that if you take one step into the promised land, yeah. in theory, that's all you get. Yeah. But I want you to boldly step mm -hmm. to four, yeah. 20, 100, and possessed the land. It took action on their part. But the interesting thing about this commentary was it said that the same thing can be said for us and this. We, yeah, have, been, absolutely. we have been given a treasure. We have been given this amazing 66 books. Yeah. And if I don't walk into it, if I don't tread into the scriptures, mm -hmm. all I'm going to get is a small amount of the treasure. Yeah. And it was the same thing that Israel was being told. If you will boldly step forward, mm -hmm. if you will listen to that voice saying left and right, yeah. Yeah. I will give you the land. And the same thing is true of us as we face uncertainty. That's right. God as is we saying, move forward. He's saying, get into this. That's right. Tread all yeah. over this book, right. and I will give you yeah. what you need. In verse 5, mm -hmm. he says, 
as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's mm how. -hmm. Oh, that's that's yeah. wonderful there. So, as I was with Moses. So, so you got COVID. Uh, God is telling you tonight, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. That's right. So, so you've lost your job. God is telling you tonight, in, in verse 5, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. It's his presence. It's so important. Well, and, and you begin to see in that verse when he says, as I was with Moses, it's almost as if the important relationship is being transferred mm -hmm. from Moses, saying, I was with Moses and he led you. Mm -hmm. But now, I'm going to, my presence is with you. And you yeah. and me yeah. and you guys it's about watching. The relationship, it, the relationship yeah. almost shifted now from a corporate thing through the leader to God says, I want to be present in everybody's life yeah. in the camp. Yeah. I think God is is teaching them and he's teaching us something very important mm -hmm. here. They uh, they had relied on Moses. Their confidence was in Moses. And God was trying to teach them something very important that he needs to teach us. He allowed them to get in a straight place. He allowed them to get to a point where everything that they had always depended on, and we could even say all the props that we've depended on, everything that, that, that we've always relied on that's been our security, when that's taken away from you, when, and, and I've, I've heard it said, when you run out of Moses, you run into God. Yeah. And so when you, when you get to that point in your life, that you realize it because because maybe COVID, maybe maybe your financial security, or maybe you got a telephone call from the doctor, or 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 maybe maybe you 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 had COVID, you could have even lost when you everything you depend on has been radically changed, friends. That's when you've got to look to God, and He'll be there for you. He yeah. will be there for you. He He'll be your stronghold. He says, "I will be with you, just like I was with Moses. I will be with you," and that's why. We chose it. Yes, it is catchy, but that's why we chose the Moses is dead title for tonight. Yeah. Uh, it's not that Moses is the focus, but is it? It is that transition from a reliance on others, a reliance on the past, a reliance on self. Self yeah. is dead. Self when is you're right. not a self. Oh, I love that. That's how I love that. Yeah. that. That's Everything right. thing that I, you I mean, you and I talked this week. You know, if some of you are old enough to remember Walter Cronkite. Yeah. Walter Cronkite at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Just barely. Just barely. <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm old? Yeah. <laughs> I remember Walter. But he would come on and he would tell you what the news was and you would trust him. Yeah. And you would turn the TV off and then you would know what you needed to know. Yeah. And Walter's dead, literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. Now there's so much uncertainty. Yeah. But but God is, is calling us away from, if you want to call it, that Moses figure. He's mm -hmm. saying, know me. That's right. Yeah. Come to know me. Yeah. Let me into your life and I will let I will help you cross those Jordans. Yes. So again, how do you know God? The only way you can get to know anybody is by spending time with him. So we come back to the relationship. That's, the that's right. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the only thing that, and, uh, that, that when we get here, Joshua 1, the only thing uh, that they had that, that was going to be uh, stable or solid was God. I mean, everything then is just like it is now, totally destabilized. Mm -hmm. There was nothing concrete, no solid ground. It was God is the only one that they could put their trust in. Yeah. And, and he's telling them, he says, you know, you, you, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you, but you've got to, You've got to look to me. Um, interestingly enough, as you go on in Joshua a little bit, as they got ready to cross the Jordan, they were instructed to keep their eyes on the ark. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Keep your keep your eyes on the ark. They had to keep they had to keep their eyes on the ark. They had to do that. They had to stay close enough. You know, that's the very same relationship that we have keeping our eyes on Jesus well, right now. It was now. like the eyes on the, the, the copper brass serpent. Right. Yeah, to, to yeah same it. thing. Yeah. We've yeah. got to keep the way we're going to make it through this, the way we're going to make it home, the way we're going to make it to the promised land is by keeping our eyes on Jesus. That's the only way, friends, the only way we're going to make it through this. And there were naysayers. You know, they had scouts went over and they came back and said, oh, man, th this is not going to be easy. There, there are giants in the land and it's going to be tough. And I mean, there were always people who were throwing distractions. Yeah. 
um, and doubts. Mm -hmm. And God kept saying, yeah. focus on me. He yes. told it first to Joshua and then the people as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I'm thinking here that there was, you know, when you read Joshua, uh, one, a lot of people have been confused and uh, and it's e rightly so it's easy uh, to see it this way that God, the gift that God was giving them was was it actually uh, the, the land itself, the property. But the, but the real gift here that God is offering them and he's offering it to you too, friends, with whatever you're going through, is his presence. Mm -hmm. Is his presence. And when they when they surrendered, when they surrendered, when they realized, when, when they looked to God completely, trusting completely in him, uh, that's when they were able to take the prophet, okay? Uh, righteous by faith, if I yeah. could use that key word there. In other words, when you've got the presence of God, you've got the power of God. Amen? Yeah, I think that's in verse 9. Verse 9, I, I yeah. told you that. Verse 9, I'll read that. I've got my finger on it. It says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Here comes the good part. For the Lord your God is with you, wherever you go. With mm -hmm. you. God with is you. with you. you. Yeah. Presence. Wherever you go. Yeah. And, it, and, it's, and it's a yeah. presence that no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, that presence is there. And um, yes, there was land that was being taken here. There's yeah. the obvious part of the story. Yeah. But what God's real heart was asking, because these Israelites had been lost in more than just wandering in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. That's right. They had lost. God, so they, had well, they had been there before. Yeah. <laughs> but God is pleading yeah. with them, I want to abide. I want yeah. to abide. I want yeah. to live in you. Yeah. Allow Keep I, me with you this right. time. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so this is perfect here because that word in verse 5, when he says, I am, I want you to think about this. Who Who, who is that I am? He's the great I am, the ever-present one. He, God is wanting you to know, friends, that he is with you. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. God wants to be a part of your life. And, and if you accept that, as you reach out and you grab a hold of him, if you keep your eyes on him, He's gonna you, you're going to receive his presence and you're going to receive his power in your life. Well, and, and the very first part of verse 5 says, and again, mind you, they're, they're staring, looking at a swollen Jordan River. That they it's had flood, to, it's flood level, season. Yeah. They had to cross that. Probably most of them had forgotten the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he said to them, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses. And that's what he's saying is, I'm going to be present. I want to be, I want you to invite me in. And when you do that, you're invincible. That's right. No, no matter what you're going through. No matter what you're going through. He's going to be there with you. He doesn't say, in either verse 5 or 9, he doesn't say that I'm going to clear the path and nothing will happen. He says that wherever you are, whatever's going on, I'm going to get you through and I'm going to be with you. That's right. Remember, they had to put their the priests had to put their foot in the water before. That's right. Before, yeah. before it was probably it cold. It was yeah. cold and it was deep. <laughs> but how did they do that? They did that through faith and the that's power right. of the presence yeah. of God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. And well, that's what we got to do. I wrote a note down, and again, um, I apologize, folks. I can't tell you which Bible commentary this came from. I read several this week, and um, about verse five, this idea that no man can stand stand against us. Mm -hmm. um, says that the God of the universe has pledged all his resources to see us through. All his resources, such as his son. That's yeah. amazing. He has pledged all his resources. And then he said that God never makes provisions for the Christian to retreat. In essence, God is saying, if I am present in your life, you can boldly move forward in the future, yeah. regardless of what's coming. I didn't give you a heart. What's the verse that talks about? I didn't give you a heart of fear. Um, I should know that off the top of my head. But God, with God in us, we have the ability to move forward with confidence. Yeah. What's that scripture you were talking about a while ago? Uh, Philippians 4.13? 
Wendy, yeah. if yeah, if God He's be for us, yeah. if yeah. Yeah. I can do all things <laughs> oh, through Jesus Christ, yeah. who strengthens me. Yes. Oh, yeah. that was Matthew nineteen twenty six. With God, all also, things are yeah, possible. possible. Yeah, all and, things are possible. And yeah. on the opposite end, um, John fifteen five says, "Without me, Jesus is speaking. Without me, you can you do, do nothing." nothing. Yes. So okay, if I can do nothing without Jesus, yes. and with God, all things are possible. Then how do we get it done? So what do we need more than anything in the whole world is we start 2021. Presence. Jesus. Jesus. The presence of presence. living, vibrant presence right. of Christ in our life. Yeah. So where is the yeah. power? The yeah. power yeah. is in right. Jesus. I can't wait to share this part. All right. <laughs> Let's go back here. Uh, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 6. And I'm going to read some here. Uh, be strong. Joshua 1, 6. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you should divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, and that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or, or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall... Now, keep on here. How do we... How do we do it? How do we keep our eyes on Jesus? How do we stay focused? You shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. In other words, what God is telling us here is to meditate on the Word of God. Um, it's almost like Joshua is, 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 uh, get, get, uh, is, is, is getting a big pep talk here. This is how you're going to do it. This is this the is, battle plan. Yeah, this is the battle plan. I like that. That's a good... Oh, this is the battle plan. This is how we're going to take the land. This is how you're going to be prosperous in 2021. In fact, this is how that. you're going to be successful yeah. in, 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 in 2021. This is how we're going to make it. This is how we're going to survive. This is how you do it. These are... These, this is... Here we are, right here. I think we these 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 two uh, parallels here that we've got. We're right here in Joshua 21, uh, 2020. We're right here in Joshua one here in 2021. Oh, well, that's a tongue tire. <laughs> I think that <laughs> often people read this and go, "Okay, if you keep the law, then you'll be prosperous and have good success." But again, I go back to. Without me, you can do nothing. That's and with right. God, all things are possible. So how? Back to verse 9. Because God is with you. Yes. I mean, this is so radical, really, if you think about it. I mean, not, if, if in my own common sense here, I thought God would have told Joshua, now this is the battle plan, Joshua. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to have to train. You're going to have to train, train, train. And meditating quick, quick, quick. day and night. You're going to have to do that, Joshua. You're going to have to do that because you're going into a foreign land. These people are radical. They are warlike. They are really good at what they do. And I thought that's what he would have said. But that's not what he said. And and, and and again, it might seem radical to us. I mean, we got you, you. here you are. You've lost your job. Here you are. You've lost your health. A and family. I could probably go, you friends. lost family, friends. I mean, I know people today. I, I, I've seen two friends that I know are real close friends. And they've been friends a long time, but they're divided on, on all these political stuff that, mm -hmm. that's going on right now. They, they, they're they mad at each other. And so there's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of hurt going on here. And so God is saying the way we're going to get through this radically is, is meditate. He says, you got to meditate on the Word of God day and night. you got to stay close to me. you got to keep your eyes fixed on me. And I'm just going to work everything out if you do that. Okay, so well, how do you radical. keep your eyes fixed on God? How does that work? Well, I know how it worked for me. Uh, because I was living out there in the world, and, and the world was just a, a complete slave to the world and all the things of the world and alcohol, drugs, and all this kind of stuff. And what I started doing is, is I started... I, I started memorizing scripture. I started talking to God a lot in prayer. Uh, I think that, that helped me so much is claiming those promises. These promises that God has given us right here, they are for us to use. It's not just enough to memorize, but we need to apply them to our life. Like that, uh, uh, well, I've used Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I like that scripture. There are, are, I can do nothing without it. You mm -hmm. mentioned that, John chapter 15, verse 5, is by, by claiming the scriptures. Uh, I, like, I love Psalms. I love going through the book of Psalms. Uh, it, I know that I was basically, I was unchurched, if you could use that word, basically. I didn't know my way around the Bible. It's just a big book. 
but I started going through the Psalms, and I didn't know how to talk to God either. But as I but as I started going through the Psalms, it's almost like all these things that that was running around my head, all these crazy questions I had, and everything. There it was, right in the Book of Psalms, and it would say it for me. And so as I as I would, it was I read the Book of Psalms, I would actually be in a prayer. Kind of, I would kind of pray my way through the Psalms. And that's the way I meditated on the Word of God day and night. And it changed my life. Yeah. Matthew 4.4 4 says, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So would you say that that was like eating, or as important as oh, eating? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, but, very good point. But that's why, and again, I think in, uh, Rick, you just read it in uh, verse 8, talks about meditating day and night. You go to uh, Psalm 1, same thing, meditate day and night. I think that if if I'm a runner, mm -hmm. I'm going to run every day. Some days I don't feel like it. By the yeah. way, I'm not a runner. But if, if, if I was a not runner. Not that you could tell. That's the idea. Not that you could tell. <laughs> if I was in the skin <laughs> chair, you might have been out. Yeah, I'm sure it did. Um, but but, but if, if, right. if, if I was a runner, I would run every day or five days a week, whatever yeah. my plan was. And there'd be days when I would get up and I wouldn't feel like it, but I'd still get up and I'd run. Yeah. Well, and and I think we talked before we went on about the disciples. You know, three years the disciples lived when you remind us they lived with Jesus, and they didn't get it. And day after day after yeah. week after month after three years, they didn't get it. But I think it is important that it is a daily thing for us. You know, even if, oh, I'm sorry. You know, even, even if there are days where you go, is this doing any good? Now look at my grandkids. And, and they're being fed little by little things about God, things about Jesus. And there are days where you go, is any of this sticking? Mm -hmm. Until one day, they'll pop off with something that is way beyond their years yes. spiritually. And you go... It is helping. It is working. It's beginning to shape and mold and soften these little hearts. That's right. Same thing with yes. us. Yeah. You know, I learned that accidentally. Uh, I've only okay. understood in the last three or four years how this works, but mm -hmm. before I understood how it worked, I had been starting to read the Bible through, and some days, like you said, you don't feel like it, and yeah. so I would leave the house, and something bad would happen. I, I don't remember now. And then but the days that I read and prayed, it, it went smoothly. And it happened so consistently like that that I started not to dare go out of the house without reading and praying. Yes, yes. And, and only recently have I understood how that works. Well, Ephesians 6 talks about putting the full armor of God on. Let me tell you what, it's a war out there. And it seems to be getting worse, right? Mm -hmm. All around us. And we need to put on the full armor of God. We need to put the breastplate on. We need to put the Word of God in. We need to, we need to pray. Uh, these are all things that we need to do to be successful. To meditate. Now, just use Joshua here. Now, think about this now. When Joshua, when they took Jericho, could you imagine Joshua walking around to the army and say, this is how we're going to take Jericho. This is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to do it. Yeah. Wendy, we want you to lead the way singing and praising God, okay? We're going to march around. Brian, don't, you don't carry your air or nothing like that. Just carry your drums or your trumpet or something like that. And you got this? You but got the, it, Wendy? But yeah. six days, if I had yeah. a trumpet, you wouldn't let me play it either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's total faith, total radical faith, totally meditating and trusting God completely. They marched around, what, six times, the seventh mm -hmm. time? Everybody knows what happened? The walls came coming down. Total trust in the Word of God. Total trust in Him. And friends, as we do that, as you meditate on the Word of God, claim these promises. Uh, that he's given us here. I, somebody told me that there's over 3,700 promises in the Bible. Uh, is it at, uh, First Peter? Uh, is it uh, Second Peter chapter one, verse three and four talks about all these divine promises that God has given us. Th these 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 promises by partaking of them, we can be we can we can we can have His divine nature. Is what the Bible says. So no matter what you're going through. No matter what you're facing, uh, whether it be sickness, maybe financial, maybe relationship, and I could probably go on and on right now for everything mm -hmm. happening, God has got a promise that you can claim. Well, and, and when you ask the question, what do you do, you know, when it's not working for you? What do you do 
when I get up at 5 o'clock every morning and it doesn't seem to work. Um, I've read the Bible through three, three times and it doesn't. And it, yeah. A verse that I had written down here, very, very familiar, we may have even reference it to, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we use that for a lot of different things. But what struck me as I looked at that text written on this sheet of paper here is that perhaps for some of us, what we need strength for is that daily devotion. We need, we need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We need to be strengthened. So number one, we want to be in God's Word. And number two, we need something to jump off the page me this morning. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm starting, I'm starting to see this hope from this, this study thing. I need something to come alive for me today. Yeah. And God says, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to be yeah. there yeah. with you. Well, Jesus um, talked about this with Nicodemus. And just to paraphrase, I'm not gonna, it's, um, <laughs> sure. it's um, John 3, 3 through 15, um, where Nicodemus says, can we talk? And Jesus says, well, you wouldn't understand unless you've got your glasses on, your yes. spiritual glasses on. Right. And, and he's like, well, how do I get that? And, and basically Jesus says it's a gift from the Spirit. And mm -hmm. so then Nicodemus, well, you, unless you're born of the water and born of the Spirit, you can't get this, and it's a gift from the Spirit. So there's nothing you can do to get this. It's, you're gifted, you get the click, you get excited when you mm -hmm. read the Bible as a gift from the Spirit. Yeah. And Nicodemus goes, how can this be? In other words, is there anything I can do? Yeah. And then Jesus tells this story and refers us back to the serpent on the pole. Yes. Now Verse remember, 21. remember the serpent on the pole, they didn't have to believe. It didn't matter whether they were messing with the serpents or not. It just, all they had to do was look. look. And then Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Yeah. And that is in John 12, 32. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking at Jesus and continue to look at Jesus, then you will eventually be gifted with the Spirit. Okay. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's yeah. slow. Okay, you just said something that I, I know that really grabbed my attention. I think it's the Lord working here. You said, even if you have trouble believing, go ahead and look anyway. Right. So maybe you're out there right now. Maybe you've never relied on God because you didn't know, because you don't know God. But what we're trying to do right now is encourage you, just like God's encouraging Joshua, look to God. Mm -hmm. See, he's the author. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, now it's time to lay aside that besetting sin, or whatever's going on in your life, whatever it is. And he says, and by fixing your eyes yes. on Jesus, it's something about the look. So so everything, he, he, he makes the, the statement in Hebrews 12, 2, that he is the author and the finisher of faith. So, Wendy, what grabs my heart here is when you said, well, you know, even if you're having trouble believing, look. You don't have to believe. Look. Just look. look. Because look. the faith There's comes life. from him. Well, life it in the comes look. from him. It life. comes from him. He gives you the faith. Everything comes as we seek him. In the fact everything that, comes as we seek him. And God. the fact that he is the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the one that starts it. That's right. Also guarantees his continued presence, like he, he told Joshua, it guarantees his continued presence in your journey with him. Yeah. And some days it's hot and some days it's cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But God says, you know, I've begun a good work in you and I will I will continue to do it until the day I come. Yes. To work in you. Yeah. And so if we look to Jesus, just like the serpent on the pole, yeah. if if we say, Lord, I don't know how, but give me the strength, give me the spirit. He said, I'm going to see you through to the end. I'm going to get you across that, Jordan. I'm going to get you through whatever is, is spiritual mm -hmm. in your life right now. Mm -hmm. I also want to point out, um, I, I don't remember who said um, there are three legs to this stool. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a, a prayer stool or something. Uh, reading the Bible, we've been talking about that, mm -hmm. meditating yep. on the Word. But prayer is yes. another leg of the stool, and we can ask God. Yes. Ask, and you will receive. That's right. We can ask God for this spirit that will yep. help us be excited about As, see, knock, all these things, these are things that, you. see, the devil can do a lot of things. He can throw all kind of fiery darts at you. He can, he can cause havoc in your life. He can cause chaos in your life. But one thing he cannot do is he cannot stop you from looking to God. Right. He cannot stop you from reaching out and say, God, help me. He can't yeah. stop you from doing that. That's a free choice. A free choice that you've got, and you can do that. Well, one of my favorite stories is the thief on the cross. 
Mm -hmm. We don't know what maybe this this young man, I'm assuming a younger man, he may have, the Holy Spirit may have been working on him. We don't know. But we do know that at that moment on that cross, when he looked to the left or the right, whatever it was. Looked in the right direction. He looked sure did. Did. Look in the right direction. <laughs> and all it took was a Lord. It was That's just right. a short yeah. request. Yeah. And made all the difference in that yeah. man's life. But he had to look. He had to he had to begin that relationship. Yes. And it's just like here. He said, You're gonna have to put your foot forward in that Jordan. You're gonna have to take another step on the other side of the Jordan. Yeah. And every time you take a step, you're gonna possess more and more it's gonna and be more yours. Of, and it's gonna be yours, but you're gonna every time you take a step, you're gonna possess more and more mm -hmm. of the promised land. Amen. And I think it's true for us spiritually. Every day when I, I reach out to Christ, when I pray, when I study, every step I take, even though it doesn't feel like I'm gaining more and more, and, and I am more invested in the kingdom of God, yes, eternally yes. and here on earth. Yes. So I think we're equating these steps with the looks. So if we open this book yes. and start looking for Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, reading, and where do we normally find Jesus? Matthew, Mark, yeah. Luke, John. If we start reading about Jesus and we start praying to communicate with Jesus, mm -hmm. and we just keep trying, even if it doesn't feel interesting, <laughs> and if we ask for the yeah. filling of the Holy Spirit, we're going to be gifted with that, and yeah. Jesus is going to come closer and closer to us. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, um, with everything going on right now, there, I mean, I'm just going to say the COVID word, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, who knows the truth about this? I mean, who really knows the truth? I mean, there's so many people that's got opinions about it. This doctor says this. This doctor says this. This professional says this. This professional says that. Uh, you know, who who should I believe? This party or that party? You know, in, in you know in politics. I mean, there's so, absolutely so much confusion. You know, when when God told Joshua to meditate on God's word day and night, what he was doing here, he was encouraging him. And don't miss this right here to feel his mind with God's truth. Because there's only one place, friends, that you're going to find rock-solid truth, and that's in the Word of God. There's not even, you know, everything else is going to be biased. The Word of God is the only place that we can find truth right here. You know, so he, he did that so he wouldn't be contaminated, you know, by what everybody was doing and what everybody was saying. He can do this, you know. So how do we stay focused in 2021? My How can we true. stay? Yeah, yeah, that word is truth. That's right. And Jesus Come said, in your heart. It may not sin against you. you. Thy word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path in this the dark way that we're living in. So how do we stay focused? How do we keep our mind pure and clean? You know, with all the stuff that's going on out there, with everything that's on the news right now, if you turn the news right now on, there's confusion. Let me tell you, right now, no. right this moment, don't do it now, wait until you, know, you get through watching this, but uh, if you turned it on, confusion, chaos, uh, uh, there, just anger, uh, all these things. So how do, we, how, do we, how do we keep our mind pure? How do we keep uh, a, a positive attitude? How do, we, how do we have hope when there's darkness all around us? It's by keeping our eyes on the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God day and night. You fill your mind with the thoughts of the Word of God. You know, one of my, I think some of you may have heard me talk about this before when I became a grandfather, um, was this sense that I needed to somehow carry on traditions of faith. Yes. And, and I love in Deuteronomy 6, uh, where children of Israel are being told, you know, you, you've had all these experiences. Yeah. You've seen crossing the Red Sea. You've seen the exodus out of uh, Egypt. All this stuff. And I love it. It says, Hero is, this is Deut uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4. It says, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all yeah. your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be first in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, mm -hmm. and when you lie down and when you rise up. In essence, you're, you're supposed to talk and praise about God all the time. That's right. It says you shall bind them as a sign on your hand 
You shall be in the front row between your eyes. You shall write upon the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And, and all those words basically mean immerse yourself, immerse your family. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you look, whether yes. it be in your house, yes. in your place of work, immerse yourself in the presence of God. Yes. I think it's interesting that it starts, two things, I want to say two things about this verse. Um, it starts with, write it on your heart, mm -hmm. which is relationship, it's the presence of, of and, God and in you your heart. And you have to have it first. Yes. It has you to have be to have real it. in your yes. heart. And second, it says, talk about it, which is the third leg of the stool. Yes. Right? We, yes. we have, read the Bible, pray uh, to communicate with Jesus, read the mm -hmm. Bible looking for Jesus, and then talk about your experience. Tell your family. Yes, because Tell that your keeps us alive and fresh. Yes, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Wendy. And, you know, I want to I want to say this now. He keeps talking about his grandchildren. <laughs> Tell you what. Now, how old is Harper and Emma? How old are they? Uh, Harper just turned three, and Emma yeah. is five. All right. Let me tell you, what happened. I'm not sure we tell you what happened just last Saturday, last okay. weekend. Uh, we had we had lost my, my 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 I was watching my son's dog and they had run off and and, and everything and and I guess y'all had mentioned that to Emmeline and Harper. So when they walked in the door, uh, Harper, who's like three, three, three years old, she said, "Oh, you lost your puppy dog," and she said, "We've been praying for you." They had been praying. They were. Praying. They were already learning to trust God. And, I, and let me tell you what, their uncle, their uncle, about all the places, their uncle, that little bit, a few hours later, found our dogs. Out of God all loves the places. dogs, <laughs> too. <laughs> I believe it was their prayers. Yeah. I believe it was their prayers. You can't convince me any otherwise. Yes, prayers of a child. You know, I, I think about, you know, not only is prayer one of those legs of the stool, but the idea of of sharing and being vibrant. If my spiritual life is lackluster, and there are a lot of different reasons why that may be, and there are a lot of different things I could do to strengthen it. But I think the idea of sharing, I, I think about tonight, I have um, a cousin that lives less than three miles from the capital. Yeah. Oh, where's that in that right now? And I texted her uh, earlier this afternoon and just said, where are you, and are you safe? And so we texted back and forth. Um, but I told her I'm going to be praying for you, Janet. Yeah. And it doesn't make me any better than the next guy. But it is, it is the idea of sharing the presence of God in my life that I hope gives me peace as I face my Jordan River mm -hmm. in life. But it is also sharing that same peace and comfort with others yeah. that, that makes God more real in my life that deepens yeah. the, his presence in my life. And then, quite frankly, um, I'm sharing my faith with others. And that, that deepens Absolutely. my experience, yeah. and it deepens my relationship and his presence in my life. Yeah, yeah and I, I believe, the, the Bible says even the rocks would cry out if we didn't yeah. share. So God doesn't necessarily need us to share. I think he, he, he said, go into all the world and, and yeah. um, spread the gospel. So why? It's because it keeps us alive. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I've thought about this. Uh, why would God want to use us? I mean, we are so self-centered. We're so selfish. We're so caught up in our own life. Why would God want to use us to spread the gospel? Well, I believe this is exactly what you're saying, Wendy. It's for our, our own good. I think when we get to heaven and we're talking to Jesus, we're going to see how when, when, when we work for others, it helps us work out our own salvation. You know, it, it does establish our faith. It increases our faith. It grows our faith when we see God working in through us in other people's lives. I mean, just the way, just think about it. It had to touch you a little bit, knowing that Inline and Harper were playing for my puppy dog like that. And then, I mean, it's like a needle in a haystack, yeah. you know, finding that your own, your own family member helped find the dog. Yeah. And I know it touched you when the it three dogs me. came home. It touched me. It touched me a lot. Yeah, because nice. I, cause I got a, I, I, what I was watching my son's dogs, and they got away on my on my on, your watch. on my watch, <laughs> and I didn't want to watch my grandbaby. And I said, "Dad, never let me watch my grandbaby uh, if I keep keep their dogs." <laughs> so I'm so thankful God answers prayers. <laughs> but you know, it, and I think about you know sometimes we read stories in the Bible and they're big grand um, stories. I think sometimes the presence of God in our life 
is exhibited and we see it in the small things. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that God is necessarily, um, you know, there, there's the, the text in the Bible that talks about I look for you in the, in the, in the wind and the storm and the this and that, mm -hmm. but I found you in a still small in, voice. In a still yeah. small voice. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we're going, I don't feel the God's presence in my life. Yeah. Um, I read this every day or as many days as I can and nothing seems to work and God doesn't seem to be talking to me. Perhaps God is whispering to us too. Perhaps God... Be still. Be still yeah. and, and be and still. And, 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 listen. Voice. and you may actually hear God talking that God's presence may be in your life um, but you're not listening. You're tuned to the wrong channel. Yeah. What does yeah. that verse say? Be still. Well, there are two. Kind of, start with that. Be still and know. No. That's the relationship yes. word. That's presence. Right. That's right. Um, that know that I'm God. And yes. there's another one. Be still and see. Stand still and see the mighty thing that I will do. That's right. Trust in God. Trust in the Lord. No. Trust in the Lord. I know that uh, Brian, I see you going somewhere, uh, but well, I, I I'm Brian, like looking for another tech, but don't keep going. It's so important. Uh, you know this this Bible right here. B I B L E, <laughs> basic <laughs> instructions before leaving Earth. This Bible is like a roadmap to us. It's a roadmap to help us through the hard times of life. No matter what we're going through, God has given us this as a roadmap. And so he, he says here in verse 7, he says, Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all uh, the law which Moses, my servant, has commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. So God is, this is a roadmap. And you understand how roadmaps work. If you don't follow the roadmap, you get lost. You can't pick and choose what part of the roadmap you want to follow. You follow the roadmap. You know, you don't you, 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 you observe to do it. You don't observe to even pray about it because if God has already given a very clear, thus saith the Lord, you just do it, right? And that and that and that, that's a blessing. And Proverbs three verse five says, Don't lean on your own understanding, right? He says, Don't turn to the right or don't to turn to the left. Don't don't uh, don't uh, use it to fit your own, you know, situation. If God says it, we do it. Follow the Word of God. Trust the Word of God. And what jumped out at me is, is the first phrase there, lean not in your own understanding. And, you know, folks, I, I'm going to make this real, I guess, right now. Um, do I lean on CNN or Fox or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram? You're confusing because they say different and, things. And, and, or do I lean on what I think or what Wendy thinks or someone else? I mean, we have so many voices in our world right now that is yes. screaming for our attention, for our loyalty. Absolutely, um, Brian. And, and I thought about that as you said, lean out on your own understanding. Yeah. I have come to the point here lately with all the screaming and the hollering that's going on and yeah. all sorts of different topics that the only thing I can do, mm. the only safe thing I can do, the only sane thing I can do yes. is listen to the still small voice yes. and say, yes. God, I know if I stay connected. Yes. If I beg and plead for your presence, I don't have to mm -hmm. beg and plead for yeah. your presence. Yeah. But if he is in me, I don't have to worry about the other voices. That's right. I don't have to worry about all the other clamoring that's going on for my attention and devotion. And I'm not saying that, yeah. that you can't have a thought yeah. or an idea or a feeling or um, whatever. But my devotion, singularly, has to be in Christ. I have to be in God Absolutely. and His presence, yeah. or I won't even get across the yeah. Jordan River, yeah. so to speak. I feel like Jesus is the answer to everything in life. Sometimes I see somebody having a problem, and I want to go, but, but Jesus can help you with this. Yes. You know, yeah. And I'm working on how to connect people with Jesus. Right. You know, um, But sometimes people are, don't even, they're not even in that place. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel like Jesus. They don't is, know he can't. Yeah, and to me, it, uh, I, it's just like Jesus is the answer to everything. Yes. You know, yeah. he, and he's our only answer. Yes. yes, and I don't think, I don't think that's a simplistic view, because it is very difficult with everything that's going on mm -hmm. to say, God, I don't fully understand what's going on. Yeah. You do, and therefore I will, and and for me at least. 
if I don't do that, and someone helped me out earlier, I kind of stumbled my way through uh, God not giving us the spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1.7. And, I, I, want, and I want to read this for a reason right now. Yeah. It says, 2 Timothy 1.7, thank you to whoever saved me from uh, looking <laughs> ignorant there. Uh, it said, not hard to do. Uh, it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and sound mind. God does not want me be to be and very courageous. So God doesn't want me to be afraid right now. Yes. There are a hundred reasons yes. for me to be afraid. Yes. He doesn't want me. He wants me to have power, which comes from His Word. That's right. He wants me to have love, which is who He is. Yes. And He wants me to have a sound mind that can only come from Him. Right. And so what He's saying is, let me in, and the fear will go. That's right. That's the reason he says, be strong and very courageous. He says that over and over and over. In, in J yeah. Joshua, yeah. In Joshua, yes, yeah. I love that verse when I, I was going through a hard time. Okay, okay, guess what's happened, gang? We have almost run out of time. I told you this was going to be an exciting Bible study. And I told you it was going to be something that will help you on no matter what's going on in your life. So I want to, I want to give you an opportunity. What's a wrap-up thought? Give you wrap-up thoughts. Uh, and we're here we are, 2021. Uh, we've never been this way before. <laughs> Life would never be the same. Uh, we could go into this with fear and trembling, or we could go into this with courage. So uh, what's your thoughts you could share to someone out there that's scared right now, that's confused out there, that don't know, you know, what's the future hope? The future can be scary. Change can be scary. Well, there is an end to this Joshua story. There is. Yes. Mm -hmm. if, if you go to chapter 21, mm -hmm. verse 43 to 45, yeah. and I'll just make it quick since we're near the end. Sure. Uh, basically, the last sentence, all that he promised, it all came to pass. Yeah, that's what Joshua was saying near the end of his life. Mm -hmm. Here he was, he was old, he was getting ready to retire or maybe even die here. One of his life speeches mm -hmm. that, uh, that he's given to, to the people of Israel, and he could say, with 100% confidence, you can trust God. You can trust him with your whole life. You can plan your whole life around him. And then moving on to chapter 22, verse 5. I love this because it's all about relationship. He, he talks about continue. It, it's continuing. So I've done everything I promised and continue. Mm -hmm. How do you continue? Okay, so he says um, keep the law. And then to continue to love the Lord your God and walk in all his ways, to hold fast to him. With all your heart and all your soul. This is relationship. This is in God's presence. That's These right. Are words for relationship. Hold on to him. Not let go. Keeping your eye on the ark. Keeping your eye on Jesus now. Yeah. Very good. Right? And, and then the last thing. Yes. <laughs> Philippians 1 6. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Wow. wow. I like that. See, it's not an accident you're watching right now. God's already begun a good work. Even if you have doubts, even if you don't even know if you can believe in God. He's already started something in your life, and he's promised that he's going to continue doing it. All you've got to do is look to him. All you got to do is, thank you, Wendy. Brian, what do you think? What right, well, do you tell that person out there that's scared, that's uh, scared about the future? Well, I mean, I, I love the, the 2 Timothy 1.7, but for me, um, for 40 years, children of Israel were promised this promised land. Mm -hmm. they, their eyes were fixed on that promised land. They got distracted, right. they got in trouble, etc. Mm -hmm. For us, we're not looking for land across the Jordan. We're looking mm -hmm. for other land across the Jordan. Yeah. For me, you took us to the end of Joshua, and I'm going to take us to the last chapter, or verse or two of the entire book, uh, the whole Bible. Revelation 22 and um, 20. He says, He who testifies to these things says, Surely... I'm coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. To me, we, we have to live. That's our, that's our promised land. Mm -hmm. That's our crossing over Jordan. That's our Beulah land. We, yes. you know, we, yes. we played that yes. song at church last week. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to live with faith. We have to know that there's a better day. We have to know that not only is there a better day then, yeah. But with Christ in my life, with Him present in my life, there's a better life today. Absolutely, I love that. This is good. This was such a good Bible study. I wish we could go. We could go a lot deeper. But the main thing is uh, Joshua 21 verse 45. Not a word.
failed of any good thing which the Lord God has spoken to the house of Israel all came to pass. Friends, that's a scripture that, that I memorize and claim daily. Uh, what I want to encourage you to do is get in the Word of God. And, and uh, if you can't, if you don't know your way around the, the, uh, the Word of God like I used to not, I get a Bible promise book. Get a Bible promise book. You can get it at any local Christian store. Uh, matter of fact, if you need one and you can't find one, I'll, I'll go on to say that we can get we can you get one. you one. We well, can buy, do that. Just buy in the one comments. CD or yeah, yeah. Buy and, one and, and other well, thing, I'm just trying, for claiming the promises oh. because there's promises there that you can claim with whatever's going on in your life. You can stand on the Word of God. You can trust the Word of God. And, and something very practical. If you don't know what, your way around the Bible like others do, um, there's something called Google. Literally. If you're lonely, if, if you're afraid, literally, if you'll type in Google, Bible text on fear, you'll get oh, 30, yeah. 40, 50 oh, yeah. verses. You, you can, it, it's not cheating. It's no. It's good old no. technology that sure. can lead you to what, That's what I the Bible is saying to you. Google. <laughs> Yeah. You know, okay. And, and so there are there are a lot of different ways to to make scripture come alive and relevant to you. Yeah. I just wanted to say how I got started. Somebody gave me a read your way through the Bible in a year Bible. Yeah. 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 Somebody asked me, would you like to study the Bible? Nobody ever asked me that. That third leg of the stool, mm -hmm. witnessing. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever asked me to study the Bible. I was forty years old. It changed my life when I got in the Word of God. This is the living Word of God. Powerful. Yeah. So this same God that we've been talking a whole lot about tonight, the Bible says that He forever lives to intercede yeah. for us. He says if we need help, Psalms 121, to lift up our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He's waiting right now for us to come to Him in prayer. And we've got a couple of prayer requests, mm -hmm. and you'd be thinking of others. If you've got some, go ahead and send them in through the comments, or you can text them to us. But, uh, but even if you don't get them in tonight before we, we will pray for them during the week. Now, we check the feed through the week. So if you think of one later tonight or this afternoon, wherever you're watching, put it on yeah. and we'll pray for it. One of our friends that, that, that join us a lot, uh, that, a real familiar name to me is uh, Patsy Tyson. Uh, she's in the hospital right now with COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got pneumonia. We love you, Patsy. We're going to be praying for you, Patsy mm -hmm. Tyson and Susie Thomas. A uh, friend of a, uh, one of our church members online here, Mary Ann, uh, her, her, Susie Thomas took a, a bad fall mm -hmm. and has pneumonia and liver trouble. Wow, she needs our prayers, Susie. So I know that there's a lot of other people out there right now that's, that's fighting COVID. But there's other issues. There's a lot of other things out there mm -hmm. that people are going through right now. Financial difficulties. Uh, we, got we got our children going back to school. Could you imagine going back to school now with everything going on, with all the fear, you know, of, of this virus? And could you imagine being a teacher? We need to pray for our teachers. We need to pray for our students. Uh, what are some of the else that we yeah. can pray for? I also have a, a friend whose father is in ICU with COVID, oh. and a friend with a friend in ICU, yeah. and a, a friend who is fighting breast okay. cancer. Can I do this? Wendy, would you pray for those that are out there fighting sickness right now? And you can take these and your friends and pray about that. And then Brian, when she gets through, if you would just, if you would pray for whatever else that God puts on okay. your heart. But pray for all the students and the teachers that's going to be going back to school right now. And, and maybe some folks that's even going through some finance. Yeah, Wendy. Wendy's yeah, a teacher Wendy. here at the back. University of Arkansas. She's a teacher there and uh, a college teacher. And so I'm sure, yeah, we, not, we need to keep you lifted up in prayer, Wendy. <laughs> So, um, and, and then those that's going through financial difficulty right now. And then I'll close this after you get done. Join us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being here and giving us your spirit this evening and always walking with us and filling us with the spirit. You've heard our discussion and you know everything that's going on. And we especially lift up those who are sick. Um, these people, Patsy Tyson and Susie Thomas and someone with a friend in Mississippi hospitalized with COVID, um, my friend's father and my friend's friend, both in ICU, and um, my friend who just found out she has, has cancer. Uh, there are so many people, just the list continues. And I know that you've heard our prayers in the past. There have been miracles that you've done for our sake. 
you answered a child's prayer and brought the dogs home. And we just ask you to do these miracles. We know you can. We ask you to lay your hand on these people tonight. And just all of these concerns, please put your hand on it, Jesus. Please hear my prayer, O oh Lord, and incline your ear to us. We look to the hills from whence comes our help. Our help comes from the Lord. And we thank you that this is done in the name of Jesus, according to the faith and righteousness of Jesus, according to God's will and for God's glory. We thank you that it's done. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, tonight, as our some parts of our country are shutting down because of the pandemic, we know there are people, though, that are opening back up. We think of our schools, of our teachers, of our students, who are trying to, to navigate uh, treacherous and, and frightening times. Lord, we just simply ask that you be with all teachers and schools, administrators, as they navigate treacherous times. We think about individuals whose finances have been heavily impacted, maybe out of work, their businesses may be failing or have gone under. Lord, we ask that you sustain all of these individuals with your mighty hand. And Lord, tonight, as Americans, at least, we know sometimes others are watching as Americans. We simply say, Lord, put your arms around the country. It needs, it needs healing. It needs hope. But Lord, may we be the hope. May we shine out your love so that a hurting and dark world can see where true hope stands. In the name of God. Amen. Father, I want to finish this up by praying for all those out there that's going to be watching uh, this study. And I pray for the Holy Spirit to speak to their heart. And they need hope right now. They need peace. They need direction right now, Lord. And I, I, pray, uh, I pray for your hand upon them. And I pray that you'd make such a big impact in their life that they would know that you're God and that they would know that you love them. And I thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, friends. Uh, 2021, here we are. But remember, God is with you. Just like he was with Moses, he will be with you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.